So now let's talk about adding your logo to every page. This is a little bit trickier, so let's go back to multi-page view, which is Command or Control um, E, and let's go ahead and delete that from that page just so we're not seeing it. Now let's come down here and look at some of the other options that we've got here. We've already talked about the type panel. We have a background panel. This is where you can add your logo to every page. But the trick here is the positioning because you've only got one set of guides per page, those cell padding guides. And those are being used to position your photos. So we can't do what we just did to position the logo on the page because we've only got one set of cell padding guides there. So the fix is to go over in Photoshop and create your logo at the placement you want. So create a blank page that is the size of one page of the book. How do you know what size the book is? Trot up here to the book settings panel and click the size pop-up menu. So right now we're dealing with a 10 by 8 inch book. And what did I say that resolution was? 240? Something like that. Well, we'll just go ahead and make it 300. So let's come over here to Photoshop. Choose File, New Document, or press Command or Control N. Now we're going to call this one Logo for 10 by 8 Photo Book. And we're going to change the dimensions to inches, 10 by 8. And we can either leave it at 240 or go to 300 if we're scared. <laughs> Remember, the higher the number, the smaller the pixels are. So go ahead and click OK. Now you want to bring in your logo. So we're going to choose File Place. And now I'm going to navigate to where my logo lives on my hard drive. It happens to be right here. Click Place. Photoshop's going to bring it in as a smart object. That means it's got that protective wrapper around it, which in this case uh, allows Photoshop to remember that, hey, this is an illustration. This is a vector piece of art. So I retain all the superpowers of whatever file format I put that protective wrapper around. So if it's raw, you get the ability to double click the thumbnail and open camera raw. If it's a vector, you get infinite scalability forever. So any superpower that's inherent to the file format, uh, Photoshop knows that when you put that protective smart object wrapper around it. When you choose file place, you are automatically creating a smart object. And in doing such, Photoshop gives you the opportunity to resize the piece of art. So it gives you these automatic resizing handles. So let's go ahead and press and hold the shift key so that we can strain the aspect ratio so we don't squish and squash the pretty little logo that DC Comics artist made for me. So we'll hold down the shift key and then to uh, make the resizing happen from the inside out so it affects all sides at once, we're going to hold down another modifier key and that is Option on a Mac or Alt on the PC. And now we're going to size the logo to how we want it to appear on the page. Now think about this. What do you want your logo to look like if it's going to appear on every single dadgum page? I kind of think it's a little over the top to require a logo on every page. But if you're, somebody's making you do it, then be artistic with it. So what I would do is I would leave the logo kind of big. Press return when you're finished. Grab the move tool. I'd hang the sucker off the edge of the page. And then in Lightroom, drop the opacity. So that it's on every page if somebody's forcing you at gunpoint to do that, but it's not in your face and it doesn't feel so ego riddled and gross. <laughs> so this is what I do. And it really is a nice look. And, and this is the technique you would use for creating your own custom background. So think about this beyond just a logo opportunity. It could be anything. It could be a texture. You could 
create your own custom texture that appeared behind your photos in your photo books. It could be anything. It could be an ornamental hoo-ha that you made in Adobe Illustrator, a little frilly little thing, just to add another level of detail to the pages of these books. So it can be anything. Uh, the only caveat with having it on every single page like this, um, or actually if you did that, you could just save that as a graphic and you could just import that you know, whenever you wanted, add that to whatever page uh, that you wanted. But having it as a background, you get the choice to have it on every page or just certain pages. So I don't know that I'd have a texture on every page or an ornamental element on every page, but you might throw some in there here and there. And it's just going to take a little experimentation for you to get it just right. But insofar as the background image, you don't really have control over placement in Lightroom. That's why we're in Photoshop and we're creating a, a new document the size of our book page so we can, with the Move tool, handle the positioning of the graphical element ourselves, and then over in Lightroom we can change opacity of it to kind of screen it back a little bit. Because if you change the opacity over here in Photoshop, then in Lightroom what you set the opacity to in Photoshop is your 100% opacity over in Lightroom.